Hey everyone, welcome back to Pokemon Rejuvenation. So in between episodes, I actually took on most of the trainers. Most of the trainers around the city. In this episode, we're actually going to take a little tour of the city itself. But before we go any further, I want to start off here in the Pokemon Center and quickly explain the EV training room. So here in the EV training room, you can train your Pokemon's EVs, and if you don't know what EVs are, they're called effort values. You can have a maximum of 510 EVs on a Pokemon, with 255 maximum in a stat. Every four of them give you one stat point. And something interesting to note here is that the speed room and the HP rooms are immediately unlocked. You can go in them if you want. And there is a way to unlock the rest, and I'll be showing that off a little bit later. But I didn't actually realize that they were unlocked immediately. Basically what happens is you go into the rooms, you'll battle a trainer that has three Melton that are like level one, and each one you defeat will give you EVs in that stat. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and explore the city now. And I think we'll start here with the Velvet Building. So, in the Velvet Building on the first floor, there should be a lady right over here. I already did this without really thinking about this, so I can't show this off on screen. But basically, when you first talk to her, she will give you a choice of left or right. If you choose left, she'll give you a Mineral Ball. That's good for catching Rock, Steel, and Ground-type Pokémon. If you choose right, she'll give you a Steam Ball, which is good for catching Water and Fire-type Pokémon. Also down here is a Great Ball. We can go ahead and move on up to the second floor. There's actually an event on this floor at night, which is there is a Pachirisu here on this floor at night. You do need a Gourmet Treat, and you can basically battle and catch the pot, Pachirisu. Unfortunately, I don't have a time adjuster for this game, so I'm not going to worry about that. I believe you can adjust your computer's clock, and that'll adjust the time in game. On this floor, there's just an ether in this corner, and we're pretty much done with this floor. So as we continue over here, there's actually a gourmet treat right over here on this bush. And over here is the Violet Building. Right over here is the Name Raider, which isn't anything special, but I do like that he's at the start of the game. It really makes things simple. Here on the first floor, there isn't anything special except this guy. He's a trainer, and there is also the scientist. If you talk to him, he will give you a potion. It's not, it's not much. I do believe on the third floor over here, there is also a hiker that'll give you a Paralyze Heal. And there is also a Dust Ball. And there really isn't anything else special in the Violet Building. So we're going to go ahead and move on over towards the east. If we talk to this person over here, they'll actually give us a reverse candy. That is basically a common candy from Reborn, or maybe a common candy from Reborn is a reverse candy from Rejuvenation. You can think of it how you will. But it will lower, lower your Pokémon's level by one. It's not really necessary because you can't over-level in this game. There is a hard cap. So if you reach that hard cap, you can't level up your Pokémon anymore. The only reason you would need to use it is if you rare candied your Pokémon above the hard cap. Over here is a bunch of shops. These two shops in particular actually aren't here unless it's a weekday. The shop over here will sell the status ailment cures. This shop over here is just like your general goods store. And right over here is someone selling Pokeballs at a very expensive rate. But unfortunately he needs that money and we're going to go ahead and help him out. So after scamming ourselves out of 1,600 Poke Dollars, he will actually give us a Voltorb. And no, I don't want to nickname that. Inside of here is actually the Berry Emporium. You want to go ahead and buy just one Pidgeberry for now. 
it's actually really, really relevant to the story. Over here is a Pokeball shop. They sell Moon Balls and Heavy Balls. You might want to buy a couple Moon Balls. You don't have to, but it could help. And this function over here is kind of disabled until we complete a bit more of the story. Or actually, it's a side quest, but that doesn't really matter. If we go ahead and move on over this way, I believe right around here, I skip it. There should be a hidden revive right there, which is really nice. That's a really, really big item. And over here is actually a hotel, but first to the side of it. And I'm going to go ahead and use my black flute right now. I actually bought that at one of the... As I was saying, I actually bought that at one of the weekly sellers. Over here we can find an iron. That's really good even if you're not planning on using it because you can sell it for about 4,900 Poké Dollars. But the weekly sellers actually have some good items. They do have the black and white flutes, which are about 4,400 Poké Dollars each. Over here, we'll actually find the TM for infestation. But as I was saying about those weekly sellers, one of them has the Poké Flutes. One repels Pokémon, one actually makes them more common, and the other one will actually sell you Soda Pops for about 300 Poké Dollars, which is just slightly better than a potion. And here in the hotel is a really, really obnoxious clerk. If you're looking for a reservation, let me just make this simple for you. There's no way a child like you would be able to afford our extremely opulent services. So please do me a favor and... And then that happens. So, we get hit with one of the hotel trolleys. The clerk continues to be a complete jerk and call us a hooligan. It's funny. Realistically, if we can't afford this hotel, we probably can't afford to hold a lawsuit against this hotel either. Anyway, she will apologize to us and move on after he continues to insult us. And we have that really, really cool music going on right there. really like that. So anyways, inside the hotel here, we can actually move our way down here and talk to this guy. He's feeling generous, so he gives us a super potion. And over here, if we invade one of the hotel um, guest rooms, we can actually find the TM for frustration. Which is really neat on its own. And if we move all the way over here and talk to this plant, we actually find some money. And that's pretty much everything for this floor, but there is more. Even though we can't afford their services, we can go ahead and move on up here to the casino. So here in the casino, you might want to talk to this person over here. In order to get rid of their gambling addiction, they flush their coin case down a toilet. Pretty disgusting, especially when you consider that we'll be recovering that later. Inside of here is something else, it's the Achievement Point Reward System. If you talk to this girl over here, she'll give you a card so you can actually check your achievement points. You can check the achievements over here, and this is basically a list of achievements that you can complete for points. And over here is the shop. Oh, I almost bought that. So it has the usual vitamins, it has a rare candy, and over here are actually the cards that you need to unlock the other EV training rooms. And if you scroll down, you have all these golden items. What these golden items do is they basically act as substitutes for the HM moves. So if you have, say, a golden axe, then you don't need to worry about having to teach a Pokemon on your party cut. And finally, the last item is actually an XP All, which kind of works like the XP Share. So that's really neat, and it will make your life a little bit easier. Finally, I want to come up here to the rooftop. 
So here on the rooftop, one of the encounters you can get in the grass is actually a Cherubi. That's a little bit important for later. If you're going to hunt a Cherubi, then I recommend you potentially find finding a male Cherubi. It's a bit specific, but the encounter rates aren't that bad. I believe Cherubi has like a 44% encounter rate here. So it's really not that bad at all. And we've pretty much done everything that we want to do here at the hotel. Thankfully. Over here we can actually move up and start a bit of the story. I don't want to do that quite yet. Instead, I want to make my way over here to the Aqua Building instead. So here in the Aqua Building, I want to go ahead and move up onto the first floor. So there should be a person over here that will give you an Ultra Ball. And over here is actually a person that will trade you a Baneri for a male Cherubi. That Baneri can be a really real powerhouse because we picked up the TM for Frustration earlier, so you can just teach it to the Baneri, which will be very, very unhappy with you because it was just traded. Next up is the second floor. And on the second floor, we'll actually find a Old Rod, which is a really nice item. It'll be something that I'll be using later on to find a couple of neat encounters. And on the third floor, do not exit this elevator. You don't want to leave the third floor. You'll basically enter a very, very difficult battle. And at the start of the battle, it may seem like you can handle it. It might seem that way, but you really can't. So you don't want to deal with that. Just leave the building. So while we're here, there's also a couple items down here. There's actually a heart scale on this wall. And if we enter down here, we'll actually enter the Girnin Park. Girnin, maybe? There's a couple cool items here. Hidden items, no less. There is a leaf stone that should be right there. And if we move over here, I believe there is a Carbos right here. There's also a Badoo that appears as I was saying, there's also a Badoo that appears here sometimes, but I don't think it appears here until you've gotten two badges, so I wouldn't worry about that. I think there's a lot of confusion over that event sometimes. But with that, we're just going to go ahead and leave the park and actually head north this time. So if we head north over here, we'll actually find a Super Potion. And over here we have the Lux Tint, or the Mr. Lux Tint. So we'll have a bit of a cutscene here. I'm not going to actually read this guy's dialogue, but basically the gist of it is you can change your difficulty setting mode here at Mr. Lux Tint. And that's pretty much it. There is the gym that's over here as well. We can't do anything about that yet. So instead we want to move over this way. And here is actually the Emerald Building. So here in the Emerald Building, there's actually usually a trainer that's blocking your way to the elevator that you have to defeat first. We took care of that, so we can go ahead and head up on to the first floor. So there's an iron that's all the way over here in the corner. Again, another really good item. You can sell that for $4,900. Okay, dollars. And if we talk to this old lady over here, she's a bit delusional. Some handsome young man gave her something to win her heart. And unfortunately, he gave her too much. And of course, it's a Max Repel. I just love this dialogue. He sprayed himself with this and told me, Stay away from me, you old hag! Old hag. <laughs> uh, I just like that way too much. That's amazing. Anyways, if we move on to the second floor, we can go down here and actually collect this red shard which could be useful later on and if we talk to this girl over here she'll actually give us a full heal because apparently we look very very sick and finally if we move up onto the third floor there is a shopping encounter here at night only at night and again I'm not gonna change my clock for that It doesn't require a gourmet treat though, so that's kinda nice. 
Down here is actually a couple of items as well. There is a elemental seed right there, and since we're grabbing that elemental seed, we'll also go ahead and grab the resist wing. Over here is another gourmet treat in between the trash cans. And over here is actually the library. So, inside this library, we do have to pay to get in, unfortunately. And once we're inside, we can talk to this guy over here. In return for some shards, he will actually teach our Pokemon certain moves. Find is kind of useless, Covet is really good. You can steal items with Covet. Helping Hand is a doubles move. Basically what happens is the Pokemon that uses it boosts its partner's or its allies' attacking move by 50%. And that's pretty much everything there is for this library. If we leave the library and move on over to the left, this here is the Help Plaza. And I'll be covering these missions a little bit later. But for now, just kind of know that they're here and that we will be coming back to them. They do give rewards, which is really, really nice. I'm not saying you should just tell people for rewards, but, you know, that's a thing. And over here is our first defend Pokemon. So, this is a female Nidoran, and you basically have to play chase with it. So, that's all well and fun. The first location is actually over here. I recommend you save right here. So, coming up to this bridge, or the other bridge that's kind of on the lower left hand side of this. You either have to pay a toll, you can turn back, or you can challenge this guy. This guy is one of the more difficult battles at the beginning of the game. I'm going to go ahead and turn back just for now and do a quick team update because I haven't done that. I actually noticed that my starter evolved. I had to do a couple of battles in the grass but it was really really close and I just wanted to have that done. I won't be adding any party members for a little while. The party members I want to add are in this really weird location where I can't add them like right off the bat, but I can add them pretty quickly with a little bit of story progression. So anyways, this time I'm actually going to go ahead and challenge him. So this will be Tourist Kageyama, I think that's how you say it. It starts off with a Torchic, it has Sand Attack, Ember, Growl, and Scratch. It also has Speed Boost, it can be a little bit annoying. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit this with a Double Kick. And it should be a 2-hit Gale. I believe he's going to switch out into his Wingle over here. So this is also about a 2-hit KO. As Water Pulse, Wing Attack, Supersonic, and Growl. So, so far you can kind of tell, Grass types are going to have a really, really rough time with this battle. So after his Wing Gold goes down, he should be sending out his Hippopotas. This has Yawn, Dig, Bite, and Sand Attack. So something you should note about Hippopotas and its evolution in Powdown is that they actually have really, really high physical defense. So you don't want to be using physical attacks, you want to be using special attacks right here. So it's going to use Dig and I'm just going to send in my Voltorb here as fodder since it's a two turn attack. And my Voltorb actually had Aftermath right there, so that works out even better. So I can go ahead and hit this with an Ember, knock it out, and then I can knock out his Torchic right here. Again, if you picked a Grass type starter, you're going to struggle with this battle. If you picked a Water type, or even one of the firefighting, or some of the other firefightings, not firefighting, but fire starters then you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Over here is the second location for the leader end. So from there we want to move all the way down over here. This is the third location. And I believe if we head up this way, 
and over here. It will get backed into a corner and this is the final location. From here you can just go ahead and battle it and actually catch it. So with that done we have ourselves a female Nidoran. You might have wanted to grab a moon ball earlier just to make your life a little bit easier as you're trying to catch that. I think we're pretty much done for the inside of the city for now. So we're going to go ahead and actually leave the city. So if we move down here, there for a couple of Pokemon you probably noticed on your way into the city, like the Fletchling over here, if you get close to them, they'll actually battle you. There is the male Nidoran over here. If you have a Gourmet Treat, it'll actually battle you as well. Over here, we have a Weasel. So it doesn't really want anything to do with us right now. And if we come into the ferry terminal and talk to this guy over here. Oh boy. So he brags about throwing away that useless weasel. Um, he's called Heartless. And if we leave this ferry terminal building over here, move over this way, the weasel will run off on its own into the city. Also, some, before we leave this area, I want to mention this. There is this lady over here that will trade you her rock ruff. Or your rock ruff. We can't actually get a rock ruff yet. But the rock ruff that she will trade you has a hidden ability, which is own tempo. Which basically means that that rock ruff will evolve into the dust form of lichen rock. So that's something to keep in mind. So as we head into the city, we have a bit of a trek ahead of us. We want to make our way all the way over here. And towards this area over here. We'll actually find the weasel. Again, it's looking out towards the ocean. And if you talk to it, you will encounter its trainer. Who is once again, again, being a complete jerk. I heard that you could learn some really powerful moves if I took you to a move tutor. Yeah, real nice guy. So anyways, no matter what you answer here, the trainer is going to battle you. There's actually some really unique music that comes here. And this is another one of those early game battles that can really, really throw you off. Unfortunately, it's raining, so I may have a little bit of trouble here. Or not, I'll just get a critical. Again, my Combuskin is overleveled, and it's a Fire-type starter, so I won't have a lot of trouble with this fight. If you picked a Grass-type starter, you might have a bit of trouble here. If you picked a Water-type starter, then you'll probably have even more trouble here, because he does have two Grass-types. The first was his Bulbasaur, and the next is actually his Execute. But again, I picked a fire starter, so I don't really have that much trouble. So eventually he will give in. You might want to be careful not to say no to this weasel. If you actually say no to this weasel and then you go to try to collect it again, you will enter the cutscene where the trainer will come back and you'll have to battle them again. Which is really interesting. It's not bad because you can see the other option. It's not a lot. It's not really that different, but it's interesting. If you're someone who likes to go through all the text options, it's kind of there. From here, there really isn't much we can do side quest wise. So let's move on over here and activate the cutscene for the story. Wait. Wait. Veronica, turn that music down this instant. Wait, the beat is about to drop. I had enough of your insolent bantering and noise pollution. Neighbors are furious. I don't see any neighbors, by the way. The police have come to this house at least three times this week. I'm not going to say that out loud. That's karma. That is enough. Hey, turn the music back on. Hey, what are you doing? 
I said I've had enough. No. It looks like I've been fatally wounded. That awful old wretch has gone too far this time. Listen, this is the end. I need to ask a favor of you. A pinch of berry in the berry emporium. I need to taste a pinch of berry one last time before I go. Please. That's actually why we grabbed the pinch of berry earlier. And of course we can give it to her. Even though we've just met, it feels like we've been friends for a lifetime. But this is the end for me. I can see the light on the horizon. If only I was able to have one last warm berry too. Goodbye. Yeah, you can leave whenever you want. Seriously, you don't have to just stand there. Just let me die alone. You're not buying this for a second, huh? Alright, alright, I'll give it up. The name's Venam. Remember it. That sounds kind of familiar. You probably thought it was Veronica because of my mom. But it's Venam. Call me Veronica and you'll need more than an orange berry to heal your wounds. Anyway, looks like I got kicked out again. This happens on a weekly basis, so I'm not too concerned. I play music too loud, I get kicked out, and then I get some poor sap to buy me free food. So, does that mean you're the poor sap this time around? I'm just teasing you. You don't have to look at me like that. Hey, why don't you come hang out with me and my friends? I promise you it'll be fun. My friends are more responsible than me, so it won't go bad. We hang out at the abandoned sewers. You can find that by going directly south of here. If you don't show up, I'll find you and demand that you buy me more food. I assure you that I have expensive taste all around. So that was lovely. Also, if you move towards the door, you can talk to it and... There will be the mother saying, No, Veronica, I'm not letting you inside yet. Go away. That's just absolutely amazing. So anyways, the abandoned sewers is our next location. If we move over here, we'll actually see Rin here as well. That poor old wretched woman. My mother has done it again. I've been fatally wounded. I cannot go on anymore. All I ask for before I pass. Very Emporium. Hornberry. Yeah, she does this a lot. And Rin isn't buying it. He knows better. Put it out, VNM. It's Rin. You've tried this one on me before. Please. Honestly, just get up, VNM. Or should I say Veronica? And there she is. She's awake and kicking. Yeah, yeah, just open the door. Rin, you're horrible. You wouldn't grant a dying girl's wish. You're a girl. You could have fooled me. <laughs> yes, I think we see how awful he treats you. And then Rin is surprised to see us here as well. Whatever, it sounds like you guys already know each other, so I'm skipping introductions. Presto! That's a go-go-go! You know what? This works out well for everybody. Sorry for eavesdropping, but I heard the professor talking to you about meeting Melia in the forest. Don't waste your time, she's not there right now. It's an old power grid the city uses despite the actual sewer system being abandoned. Recently it was shut down by an unknown source. Melia decided she wanted to see if she could fix it herself. Professor Jenner is good with machines, so I bet he's taught her a few good things. Anyway, we shouldn't keep the ladies waiting. Let's go. And let's go. Welcome to the abandoned sewers. Not exactly a place I'd like to be welcomed to. This is the lobby, but we're basically there, yeah? The abandoned sewers is a place where a lot of trainers come to level up their Pokemon. Believe it or not, I may need some help getting through these sewers myself. That was a joke. So, yeah, come on, let's go. 
So yeah, we'll actually be teaming up with Rin for this, and there's actually a lot I want to do down here in the sewers. There's a couple encounters that I want to get. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you as soon as I grab those encounters. Alright, so I'm back. I got the Pokemon that I wanted to grab, which is actually a Wubat. They're about a 10% encounter, and I also wanted to make sure that I grabbed a Wubat that has the ability Simple. What Simple does is it makes you more prone to stat changes, it basically doubles them. So if I use a Calm Mind on that Wubat, or eventually the Swubat, it will have a 2 times boost in Special Attack and Special Defense instead of just the normal 1 times in each. That's pretty much the only Pokemon that I wanted to grab, but I also want to talk about held items, because there's some really, really neat held items down here that you can grab. All Pokemon tend to have a chance at holding a certain item, depending on what Pokemon it is and whatnot. So down here you can actually find rubbish that will be holding black sludge, so if you want a poison type, you might want to try to grab that. Or, if you grab the old rod, you can fish in this water over here, and I'm not going to actually try to find anything, but I will just demonstrate that you can fish in it. And you can find Grimer and Coolfish. The Coolfish have poison barbs, not interesting, but the Grimers actually hold nuggets, potentially. Potentially, it's not guaranteed. And something I forgot to mention when we were on top of the hotel was that you should probably find a Caterpie. You want to find a Caterpie with the ability Shield Dust and not run away because that means you can evolve it into a Butterfree that will have Compound Eyes. Compound Eyes is an ability that increases the chance of you finding wall Pokemon that have held items. So again, between the fact that you could get Covet really early on, the fact that you could grab that Butterfree, you can easily farm Nuggets and farm a sizable chunk of money if you really, really want to. So anyways, I think that's going to be it for this part. In between, I'll probably battle a few of the trainers that are down here in the sewers just to save a little bit of time for the next part. I'm also trying to get these episodes down to a sizable time a little bit of a manageable time. So I hope you all like this, hope it helps, and I will see you on the next one.